good day to you, partner. I'm Dean, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Hey guys, we'd solo here, aka the Skeleton King. We have got a very exciting build right now from Knives, basically the the second coming of Landis 3, a guy who was always trying to uh, be ahead or behind the meta, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, doing his own thing and trying to make things work. And, you know, to Landis' 3 credit, he, he I, I think, I give him credit for showing how good Poison Nova was because of Pierce. And his work helped us realize how good Poison Nova was still, even after all the nerfs, because we just didn't factor in how much changing enemy mobs being pierced below zero did for Poison in particular, where, again, Poison gets that double dip. Now, as you can see, his gear is very, very good. Now, why you were greeted with a huge picture of Eternal Breath of the Dying when you clicked on the video is the most important part of this build is to understand why Plague is better than Eternal Breath of the Dying. Now, Eternal Breath of the Dying, as some of you may know, used to be a uh, meme proxmancer, uh, which we did back in Season 4 or 5. And it was really cool, and it worked on death. And I believe Landis... Actually, I, funny enough, I think Renato talked about it first, and then Landis 3 actually made a functional version of the build. So that was always in our heads. Now, when Innocence came out, people were playing around with Eternal Breath of the Dying because Innocence procs on striking effects. And Eternal the Breath of the Dying has an on striking effect of a level 40 Poison Nova. I thought it was complete ass. Now, did it work? Yes. Was it useful or good in any way? Not really. I kind of thought maybe with three-piece it would be functional because you really needed the pierce, and I just wasn't doing enough damage. That's where Plague comes in. You lose five skill levels, but you gain 20 pierce and more useful stats. You gain SCR, uh, you gain plus two all skills, and actually we're going to get to that because plus all skills is more important for this build than you realize. And... Basically, the pierce alone makes it better, and the fact you get so many useful effects just kind of helps out. If you're wondering if Eternal Breath of the Dying has any good effects, uh, yeah, plus 30 all attributes is actually pretty good. But does it make up for everything else play gives you, like a cleansing aura? No. So as you can see, the build is actually going pretty quick. It's doing pretty high damage. Now, I was talking to Knives about this, and I actually felt like he played a bit too slow. I think his Poison Nova, with a lower resist up, kills every single enemy here, except for Champs Elites, White Corpulence, and possibly Flesh Crawlers. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm almost positive all the other white mobs die. Maybe not the Skeleton Archers. I'd find that hard to believe. I'm sure if somebody watched even closer than I do, they'll see one die without it. We could also run it into a damage calculator and make up for sure. Now, in my opinion, he shouldn't waste time trying to kill Champ L Elite Corpulence and possibly Flesh Crawlers. I think there is, there is no reason to stick around and kill them, because density is what makes this build function. And if everything else is dying after your first or second proc of Poison Nova, and then Blade Shield is trying to look for an enemy to proc against, and there's less enemies on the screen, guess what? You're going to proc less, so it takes even longer to have to kill those final remaining enemies. Now, one thing in, in his defense is I actually... I thought it was interesting sometimes he didn't play faster, and then I realized, oh, I, I think I know why he's not. I think he's actually making sure he does proc. And I think it's one of those things where just, like, roll the fattest map possible, and... Yeah, wait a second to proc. Don't. I don't know. But he procs almost every time instantly, especially when he lands in the middle of at least, you know, a chunk of enemies. And just, you know, keep going. After the first day or two of the season, you're never going to run out of maps. And wasting time chasing down every enemy that is hard for your build to kill will just make you poorer in the long run. 
Now, let's go for everything else about why this build functions properly. We have Emilio with a Storm Spire. Some of you may be asking, why don't we use an Act 3 Merc, any one of them? Uh, Prayer Merc with Innocence again. And uh, what about Holy Shock again with Innocence for Static Field? Well, although Act 3 Mercs are probably the best Merc with Innocence, thanks to the fact they have more gear slots than every other Merc in the game, because they have a shield rather than just one weapon, the problem is we couldn't really find a good use for that shield. You might go, well, Exile, right? Well, that's a problem. Remember I talked about how you really want enemies to be dense and be on you, and if you run out of enemies, the build really, really slows down? Exile procs Decrepify, which is amazing, but the problem with Decrepify is it slows down enemies. And so everything that slows down enemy movement is something we don't want to deal with. So like Holy Frost... Uh, Doom with, um, you know, Holy Freeze, Frost Nova, Holy Freeze, any chilling effect, anything like that, you don't want it on this build. In fact, you want ways to increase enemy speed. So possibly there's some way to try to get Confuse into the build as well. The problem with Confuse, though, is, is we're going with Taunt on the Merc, because what does Confuse also do? Well, it makes them attack anything, so I don't know if that would actually be better, because, again, they need to be on you to proc the Blade Shield, not just attacking anything. But just throwing out there, there probably is some more optimal setup out there of items we're not thinking about. But if you're trying to make this build, just keep that in your head. You're looking for density, you're looking for fast enemies, and you want ways to make enemies fast and lower their defense so Blade Shield strikes more often and then procs the abilities on your gear. So Storm Spire is amazing because Static Field is good. So Static Field is instantly lowering all the enemy's health on the screen. So that kind of goes with this build, which we're cutting a lot of damage, and we're cutting damage so we can basically run lower resist, which kind of helps there, but it's still not quite enough, so that's where that Static Field comes in. If you're looking for other ways to lower enemy defense, there are a couple, and that would be where the Iron Golem comes in, because I actually think the Blood Golem makes the build worst, is we could run things like Sanctuary, or concentration. Yes, fanaticism could work as well, but I really don't think that's as good because Beast only rolls 8 to 10, and it's super expensive. The nice thing about Sanctuary and Concentration is they both have a budget option with the Mage Slayer and the um, Heavenly Garb. Also, the Heavenly Garb is an armor, so that kind of helps make sure the Iron Golem lives just a little bit longer. And then they also have the more in-game option of an Asylum and the Pride. Now, they're pretty similar in cost, and the Concentration does give quite a bit more attack rating. Um, if you're wondering about the Demon Limb on Enchant, that also increases your attack rating, but by a pretty paltry amount, only 130%. But again, you do need to make sure the attack rating actually is there, because Blade Shield has to actually hit the enemy. If you're wondering about how Blade Shield works, I think it's a little out of the scope of this video. I probably should make a video like dedicated to it um, but basically just think about it like this way every 10 to 20 frames it's gonna strike enemies around it or try to and um, well technically quicker than 10 to 20 frames so you might be noticing obviously poison nova is getting cast more often than 10 to 20 frames that's because the next hit delay only affects the the same enemy, right? Unless I'm wrong on this, in which case, please correct me, because I could really use to be corrected on Innocence, because Innocence was changed so many times, and that's one of the reasons I didn't spend much time on it. But if it works the way I think, and how this video seems to go, is that um, every enemy will have that next hit delay of 10 to 20 frames, based on your Blade Shield skill level, right? On a level 11, it should be, I think, 15 frames. That's not too important. But that's already about the same speed at which a Necromancer cast his spells. We're only going to get down to 9 frames. Yes, I understand that's a lot slower. But we're proccing it on every enemy around us, right? And then the thing is this, if a new enemy interacts with us, they can proc it too. So that's why Innocence is so incredible, and that's really why enemy speed and them being surrounded by us and us able to hit them helps this build work. Any time the density lowers, it just falls apart, and he talks about this as well. So again, don't even waste time on anything that slows enemies. Is there anything else you can do with this build? 
yes, actually, there are more Merc options. Now, we went with Emilio because we wanted Static Field and we wanted Defiance, and we didn't want to slow enemies. We still have the Helm slot for Ferocity, which lowers enemy defense as well, by the way. Just trust me on that. I should have put an image up. Maybe I will. Um, God, I can't think where I was at. Oh, Mercs. But is there anything else we can do? Well, we can go back to the Act 3 Holy Shock Merc. Why? Well, we get Static Field. Now, we're not going to have Defiance, although there is some ideas about making an Exile Iron Golem on this build. And Exile is not the most expensive thing in the world, and the chance it procs to Crepifish should be kind of low because Iron Golems attack slowly. So we can get that Defiance back. And the reason we'd go back there is because the Act 3 Merc can use a War Shrike. Now, a War Shrike has an incredibly high um, Nova cast on striking. I kept talking about using Destruction, but Destruction Nova Cast is actually on attack, not on striking. So it doesn't work with Innocence. So we have to go with War Strike. Now that's going to be a 4K plus Nova on top of Static Field. Okay? And that's going to help us get even higher damage numbers. And really, this is more about offense than anything else. If you're wondering how he survives with such low health, is for one, his res is pretty good. He has that ridiculously stupid snake cord with a plus two max all res core. And that probably is BIS as long as you don't need the SCR from an arachnid mesh. Um, yes, his Ellie res is low, but Ellie, Ellie damage doesn't really exist in this game, right? So as long as we have the life after each kill, I mean, you can see he doesn't incur hit recovery that often. Yes, it is possible. Like, don't run Burning Souls with this setup, okay? Just don't do it. Um, it well, and, and if their aura stacked, it just kind of fucks up any build in the game. But as long as we have the life after each kill, the super high defense, that's part of the reason for Martyrdom. And again, Martyrdom also has the Bone Armor, which is why his life is so low, because he has all of his points and energy. Bone Armor on Martyrdom is also on Striking, and it's just a pretty good shield defensively and has plus, you know, skills. Now, let's get to that. Why do we want plus skills on this build? If we're using a proc on a weapon which doesn't benefit from plus skills, I'm sorry, there's so much to talk about, which is why I use two maps. That's because we still need Blood Warp to hit zero CD. And you might go, we solo, just put more points in the Blood Warp. Don't fuck with me on this, okay? I wasted so many time on these kinds of builds. And trust me, every time I forgot to account for the fact I had to hit plus 10 all skills, it was just wasted theory crafting. And technically, yes, you don't need zero CD blood warp, but it's almost always just better in the end, and it just kind of feels bad to play a Poison Nova build without zero CD blood warp. Yes, there's a lot of situations where it's going to be effectively the same, but just the times it's not sucks. So you need to hit zero CD blood warp. So even if you put in 20 hard points, you still need plus 10 all skills. And as you can see by his gear, he just hit it. So for instance, if you do need more skills, run an Arachnid Besh. That's all I have to talk about for now on this build. More to come later. Skelly King out. GG. Play with us, Daddy.